a look at some stream landforms, beginning with the alluvial plain. And so alluvial plain, large, 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 massive. And so alluvial plain is a large, flat area of dropped, fine grain, small alluvium. What is alluvium? Alluvium is deposited clay, silt, and sand from highland areas. And so alluvial plains, very much as it characterized, very flat, uh, but also lowland areas. Uh, alluvial plains, typically they're going to be very large in size. Um, so, you know, although there might be an alluvial plain here along the uh, White River, uh, alluvial plains we're going to think of as being you know, much larger uh, in size. Uh, so we'll differentiate this from a floodplain here in a minute. Here's our good friend, the Huang He River, uh, also known as the Yellow River. Uh, and so it's the most sediment-filled river on Earth, and so it's loaded with alluvium. Uh, and so what we've got going on is as it you know, carries that alluvium, that sediment from areas further inland, it eventually flows into uh, the, uh, I believe, the Boha Sea. And so essentially what we can see is we can see the alluvium being carried and deposited in this image. Here's 1995. I mean, we can very much see that uh, here. But one of the concerns is this river, especially in flat lowland areas, is it typically changes its course. Uh, so it typically changes its, you know, kind of back and forth, its origin and its destination, uh, which we can see here in some following images. And so now we've got the flow coming out the uh, one side. And now it's coming out of the north side, coming out of a completely different direction. So one of the characteristics of the lowland uh, alluvium area uh, is it's very natural for it to change its course. And so it can be problematic if you're living here, for sure. Uh, when all of a sudden on one side the river is flowing, and then all of a sudden after a major rain event or maybe a hurricane comes through here, it flows a different direction. Next up is floodplains. So every single river has a floodplain. So these floodplains are filled with layers of alluvium. Uh, and key to this is the idea of we get this kind of this, this the slope, the gradual gradient starts to decline, uh, you know, less and less, and so it becomes more flat, and it forms that meandering stream. Um, so often it occurs after uh, the stream is you know kind of downcutted. Uh, as it stops downcutting, as it stops that flow, it becomes much less. Uh, becomes more, like I said before, of a depositor than an eroder. Uh, and so one of the things is we get kind of this, this area around a stream which tends to be quite flat, but once again, it's a floodplain, so it floods often. Uh, and so as that flooding occurs, what it does is then, then the flow of water brings that sediment to a greater amount of area, of course, then drops that sediment as that floodplain, as the, you know, the rain event declines and the flow all, all of a sudden goes back to its original original uh, amount of discharge. And so what happens is the sediment along the sides of a river uh, is then laid down, leaving that, uh, that those layers of alluvium. Uh, so once again, low-lying flat areas, but much smaller than alluvial plains. Of course, alluvial plains we can see from space. We can see the Mississippi alluvial plain. If you Wikipedia it and you Google it, you'll see it's a massive area. Uh, so it's kind of like a, a flood plain to the 12th degree. Uh, where floodplains, like I said, every single river has one. Uh, and so even here, the White River, we are currently IEPY. We are in the White River floodplain, the White River West Fork floodplain. Uh, and so if we look below Cavanaugh Hall, below uh, the lecture hall, we'll find these layers of alluvium, this fine grained sediment, created from a, a time when this area flooded quite often. Uh, of course, Indianapolis and IEPY, we don't want this area to flood, and so we've protected ourselves and we've created these human. Uh, these man-made features uh, to prevent this area from flooding, uh, of course, because of the devastation that would cause. Uh, characteristics we also find within the stream landform. And so one of the things that probably a lot of you have already clicked the next slide because you don't want to hear me ramble, but you're missing out, if you did, on the two next topics which are uh, very much critical to understanding uh, the what we would expect to see if we flew over most of the rivers in Indiana. What you'd expect to see is on one side, on the outer side of the meander, what we call a, a cut bank or an undercut bank. Uh, so that's going to be found at the outer portion of a meandering curve. And so once again, we go. We talked about this beforehand. The fastest flow, uh, uh, the fastest flow of a river is always over the deepest channel, and so it essentially carves out a deeper and deeper channel. Uh, so we can find the cut bank. 
typically going to be on the outer side and have much more erosive capabilities uh, than the other side, the inside of a meander, which we call the point bar. So the point bar deposit uh, is going to be the inner portion of a meander. Uh, and so here we're going to have the slower water velocity on the inside. Uh, it's where sediment collects. Uh, and so we're going to see undercut bank is more an eroder where point bar deposits are where we're going to see more deposition. So the undercut bank, point bar, get these stuck in the head as we look at some specific examples on the following slides. Here we have a meandering river. And so the red line illustrates where the velocity is the fastest as this river flows from the north to the south. Uh, and so some characteristics we would find is on the outer meander, um, we would find faster velocity, uh, and then also a more cut bank, a steep slope, where on the inside we see more of that point bar deposit, kind of that U-shape, horseshoe shape. Uh, and so these are kind of the, uh, the, very much the characteristics we would expect. Now, one way to illustrate, okay, well, why is it faster on the outside? If you can think about a major sporting event, um, so ma think about, you know, uh, the Colts games, you've got, you know, what, 70,000 people all leaving at once. And so when people all leave at once, they go down the stairs. If you go down the stairs, you know, coming from, let's say, the top, the, the, the cheap seats down to the bottom, to the exit level, one of the things is you notice is if you walk on the inside or up against the railing down the stairwell, you'll notice it's not as fast as when you walk on the outside. Uh, you're essentially going the same distance as everyone else, but you're not going as fast. It's a tighter corner. Uh, whereas on the outer part, walking down the stairs, massive, you know, 70,000 people leaving, it's freer. So you can move at a faster pace, although you're going the same, same distance, you know, because obviously you're still going the same, uh, you know, down the same steps. Uh, and so the outer part of that, we can relate to this river here, this image here with regarding the outer portion of that meander is where we're going to find faster flow. So go to a sporting event, walk down the stairs with 70,000 people, and then visualize this and kind of compare it to the flow of this river. And so like I said, we can actually see this here uh, in the Midwest. And so here is uh, the Mississippi River, I believe, or whatever river it is. Uh, but we can see the point bar deposits on the inside of the meander and a much steeper cut bank uh, found on the outer side of the meander. And so you can see where that sediment has collected, uh, creating these, these, these little point bars, these little areas. Uh, they're almost like mini beaches uh, on the inside of a meander. And you can see them all the way down from the top to the bottom. So carrying on with types of landforms uh, that we expect to see in a floodplain, beginning with an oxbow lake. In an oxbow lake, thinking back once again, these are flat areas, typically, which they have these meandering streams. And these meandering streams, as I showcased on a previous slide, they, they change their course over time. Uh, and so what we can find is in certain areas, we get what we call a cutoff uh, from that meandering stream, creating the situation where you get a oxbow lake. Uh, or this lake that's essentially where the river used to be. Uh, of course, there's still water. It's collected, creating uh, this lake. Uh, these are also referred to as billabongs in Australia, for those uh, interested in Australian oxbow lake terminology. Uh, a meander scar is essentially what ends up happening is this oxbow lake uh, has separated. Uh, we'll, we'll get plenty of images to show this in a following slide to give you more of an you know, kind of understanding. But what happens is that oxbow lake is a cutoff and so no longer does it have anything that's feeding it. No longer does it, you know, it's not a part of the river. And so where is it getting that water from? Well, it only gets it from precipitation from rain. And so for the most part, all oxbow lakes eventually dry up. And when they dry up, they leave what we call a meander scar. Uh, this, this area that used to be uh, an oxbow lake. Uh, and so a meander scar is essentially an oxbow lake that's dried up. Scar. Following is an animation pretty much you know, showcases what we just saw there on that video. So we get a major rain event, uh, and so the stream might get a cutoff, the meander might change. And so over time, deposition starts to build up along the sides, creating a situation where this cutoff uh, of this meander uh, becomes an ox. And so that deposition creates a situation where an oxbow lake uh, is formed. And eventually a meander scar. And so one of the things, we see these all the time. And so in flat areas, Pakistan, uh, um, 
India has you know good amount of these flat areas, Bangladesh, flat areas that have these meandering rivers and a ton of oxbow lakes. And these are often caused uh, by major rain events. So you get the monsoon season, creates a lot of oxbow lakes, creates a lot of cut-off meanders uh, from those massive uh, rain events that typically happen during that wet season, that wet monsoon season. And here's more of the same from the same uh, area. This is just one uh, rain event completely changed the uh, the meander and then created this oxbow lake in Pakistan. First off, let's figure out where we are. We're on the border between Iowa and Nebraska. And so Iowa and Nebraska separated by the Missouri River. Uh, and so the Missouri River separates these two states. It's a natural boundary between the two. Uh, and so what we have is Iowa in green, Nebraska in yellow. Uh, and so when you fly into Omaha, Nebraska, you fly into Epley Airfield here. And so here I am, a professional geographer, uh, flew into Epley Airfield, and of course, okay, I'm in, I'm in Nebraska, cool. Uh, and so as I got on the charter bus taking us to Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, and that's what's showcased here in this red line, uh, we were cruising along, and all of a sudden, uh, a sign said, Welcome to Iowa. And so as we follow along this red line, uh, all of a sudden, I, boom, the sign said, Hey, welcome to Iowa. And here I was, professional geographer, and immediately, what do I do? I look underneath me. Well, well, where's the Missouri River? If I should be in Iowa, I should have crossed the Missouri River. Go through a stoplight or two, get to the other side, and the sign says, Welcome to Nebraska. So this is toward the end of that arrow. So I'm thinking, well, where in the hell is the Missouri River? I should have gone over it twice. Well, what happened here was when the states were first designed, when the states were you know, declared or whatever, the Missouri River followed the shape of what created Carter Lake. And so essentially the Missouri River uh, has changed its course since becoming, uh, since becoming the natural boundary, being used as a natural uh, state line between Nebraska and Iowa. And so what happened since then is that cut off of that meander, uh, and so because they don't want to change the rules, and if you live in Carter Lake, Iowa, and you're proud to be Iowa, you're, you're cool with that. You don't want to be Nebraskan, uh, then you're not going to change. And so this area we see here created from uh, an oxbow lake. Kind of this perplexing deal that even stumped the most professional of professional geographers.